Good morning. I greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to this Sunday service that we are live streaming from the soul winning revival church in Banana Hill in the Republic of Kenya. I want us to open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We honor you, Lord, for what you have done to us. Thank you for giving us such a beautiful day, O Lord. Thank you for the gift of life that you've given to every one of us. And as we fellowship together in this service, we thank you because your presence is with us. We want to pray that, Lord, even as we do praise and worship and share your word this day, Lord, you are going to minister to every one of us. You are going to bless us in your own special way. You are going to touch every one of us and meet with us at the points of our needs. Blessed be your holy name, O God. We thank you and we honor you. For this is our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to go straight to praise and worship. And I want to give this opportunity to Sharon and uh, Pastor Catherine to take us through the praise and worship. Welcome in Jesus' name. Amen.
God, you are holy, you are able, O oh God. Lord, you are awesome, you are righteous, you are righteous, Lord. You cannot be compared to any other God. You alone are God. That is why we worship you this morning. You deserve our praise, you deserve our worship. We welcome you to this place, O oh God, that you may have your way, O oh God, that you may have your preeminence, Lord, and that you may take your place, O oh God. Lord, may your grace abide in us. We thank you and we worship you. Blessed be your holy name. For it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. We're going to sing that. Yesu, tunakupenda kwa sababu yeye ndiyo aliye tupenda wa kwanza. Amen. We love him because he loved us first. What kind of love is this? Hallelujah. Amen. Let us put our hands Amen. together.
Praise the name of the Lord this day, and we are here to praise Him. We live to worship Him. We live to glorify Him. We live to praise Him with everything that He has given us, with our lives, with all that we are. We were actually created. We were made to worship God, our Father. Therefore, we thank God for giving us that uh, wonderful time of worshiping Him and glorifying Him. So we want now to move to the session of the Word. We want to I uh, pray that and believe that you are ready, you are set, you are organized in your house with your people, ready to receive the word of God. So I want to take this opportunity to welcome Reverend Charles to bring the word of God to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Karibu. Uh, Charles, amen. Amen. Praise the name. And Sharon for leading us in a very powerful praise and worship. I believe you have enjoyed that session. I want us to go straight to the Word of God. We will be sharing on a topic I have titled Divine Provision in the Midst of Famine. And I want us to read from 1 Kings chapter 17 and read from verse 1 to verse 9. I have been bringing to you uh, messages of hope because that is what I felt inspired by the Holy Spirit to do and I want to believe that these messages are encouraging you and stirring your faith to be able to continue pressing on and waiting upon the Lord so the Bible says we are reading from 1st Kings 17 verse 1 to verse 9 and Elijah or Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. Verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here, and turn eastward, and hide by the brook of Kerith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the leaven, uh, the leaven to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook of Kerith, which flows into the Jordan. The leavens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up, because there had be no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. That is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, my dear friends, brethren, 
God is a mighty God and he is not limited by circumstance that we go through, you and me, but God is an almighty God. He's all powerful. He's not limited by space and time. We have read a very, very powerful scripture about Elijah the Tishbite. This man is introduced in verse 1 in a very amazing way in few words. When you look at verse 1, Elijah is introduced as a Tishbite. Remember before then we have not heard about Elijah, but he's appearing at this particular point in time in Israel. I don't know how you be introduced if you are appearing for the first time. But we are only told that he is a Tishbite and he is an inhabitant of Gilead. And the other thing we are told about Elijah is that this is a man who stood before the God of Israel. And he comes forth with a word of judgment from the mountains of Gilead and he comes with a word to Ahab. Ahab was the king at that particular point in time together with the queen Jezebel. And this man is bold enough to come and proclaim a word before the king. And why is Elijah so bold to come with a word? I want to believe it is because this is a man who was used to, be, to standing before God. He is introduced as a man who stood before God. And because of his ability to stand before God or to be in the presence of God, it was not hard for him to stand before kings. Praise the name of the Lord. Those who stand before God or those who kneel before God it becomes easy for them to stand before kings. It becomes easy for them to stand men. And he comes with a powerful prophecy. He is declaring a period of drought. He says that there will be no rain. There will be no dew except at my word. And we later come to discover that this prophecy, the prophecy that he is giving, it lasts for three years and a half. A moment or a period where there was no rain, there was no dew from the sky, and people went through a tough period. And the prophecy of Elijah had serious implications in the land of Israel because these are people who had turned away from God. You know, lack of rain for such a long period of time, three and a half years, meant that uh, the harvest would not be experienced. It meant that animals are going to die because of lack of pasture, because of lack of water. So it meant that the economy or the sustenance of the people of Israel was seriously to be compromised. But... It is because these people had turned away from God and therefore they deserved a judgment at that point in time. And after he releases such a powerful uh, prophetic word, such a powerful judgment, it is time to leave. And we see God telling him that you need to leave. You need to get away from this place. You have done what I have wanted you to do. It is time to depart, it's time to leave. And in verse 3, I mean verse 3, the Bible says, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook of Kerith, which flows into Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the leavens to feed you there. Praise the name of the Lord. So Elijah gets instructions from God. And as I've told you in the, uh, the previous uh, weeks, that there is need to sharpen our hearing capacity so that we can be able to 
communing with God and that we can be able to build our capacity to be able to hear from God so that God can be able to lead us and give us instructions and that we can be able to hear them very clearly and be able to comply by those instructions. So he is given instructions by God that time has come, you must leave and you have to go to the brook of Kerith and from there I will provide for you. Remember there is a powerful pronouncement that the land will not experience any dew nor rain and therefore there will be no food uh, along the way, there will be no water along the way and God sends him to a brook to go there and he supplies uh, to him. At the brook of Kerith, that is the, 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 the place that now Elijah was to be in, the Levens were given the coordinates of Kerith. It is a place where now God is going to keep his servant and also provide for him. It is important for us to know where does God want me to be in uh, what point in time. The location is very important because we see the location of Elijah being the, uh, the brook of Kerith and in that location God is able to uh, provide to him the supplies. The supplies are delivered to pure box <laughs> brook of Kerith. So it's good for you to be in the right place because your provisions are tied with that location. So the divine location where God wants you to be. Very, very important in your life. But even as he went to Kerith, I want to bring to you uh, at least as, um, some information so that you can be able to understand better. The word Kerith means a cutting off. A cutting off. So Kerith is a place of isolation. So we see he is being sent to a place which is a place of isolation. He has to be away from other people. And God will deal with him at that place of isolation or a place of cutting off whereby the outside world can be shut out from him and he can be able to listen to God and he can be prepared by God for a bigger moment, for a bigger ministry. Those moments of Kerith, they are very, very important in our lives. Although there are times of isolation, there are times of being cut off from other, other uh, spheres of life, but it is important for us to be in Kerith at one point in time that we may be able to hear God even more. And I understand that for sure there is something bigger that was waiting for Elijah before, I mean, after the time he spent in Kerith. This is a man that we see later doing great ministry in Mount Carmel, where he gathers all the Israelites and also the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah. And he's gathering the whole nation and all those false prophets to the Mount, Mount Camo because it was a time to show really about evil and good. It was a time to show that good shall always prevail upon evil. It was a great context at that place so that people could turn to the God of Israel. But before we come to witness the victory of Mount Come on, let us understand that there is a Kerith that comes before Mount Camo. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And many times as Christians, we want to celebrate the victory. We want that nice experience of Mount Camel where there is manifestation of God's power. We are perplexed. We are excited. We enjoy that power that happens at Mount Camo, those miracles that happen in Mount Camo, we are excited about them. And many times we forget but that before the victory in Mount Camo, there is a carried experience. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And when you look at the Bible, you will come to discover that many servants of God, they had their carried moments. They had their carried experiences. Amen. Before God brought them to another level where power was manifested, they had gone through their own carried experiences. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Moses was in the backside of the desert for 40 good years. It was his carried moment. It was a time of isolation. It was a time of cutting off from other people. It was a difficult time. It was a tough moment. But God was preparing him for greater victory later in his life. Before we witness that, we need to know that is a carried experience. Amen. And Moses was so faithful to accept those kind of carried moments in his life and he was faithful. He stayed in the backside of the desert for 40 years. If you look at the life of Joseph, this is a man that went through his carried experiences. He was in a pit. He was in a prison for several years. I don't know how many years, but we know after he had been in prison for some time, when he interpreted the, 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 the dreams of the chief butler and his friend, we find he's forgotten, uh, uh, he's forgotten for two good years by, this, uh, by, 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 by his friends that are together with him in prison, meaning that he was in prison for a longer period, on, uh, period of time. That was his carried experience. We know also somebody like Apostle Paul is a man who spent 11 years in obscurity in the desert. Men and women of God have gone through the carried, ex or the carried experience where they are cut off, where they, they, they are in a place of isolation. And I want to tell you that this precedes those moments of glory, those moments of miracles, the carried experience comes before so that we can come to a point whereby we are humbled. We trust upon God in every part of our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. The carried experience teaches us to depend on God because when he's commanded to go to the brook of Kerith, Remember, he has already made a pronouncement that there will be no rain, there will be no dew. He really needed to depend on God for his own provisions because there was drought in the land. And we see when he goes to carry, the God is so faithful that if even in such a place of isolation, God was able to provide water for him. God was able to supply food for him. God was able to supply meat, bread for him. But one day we are told that the brook dried up. Mm -hmm. That's another moment. It's a powerful, powerful experience that requires you and me to reach a level whereby we can depend on God. It's a challenging time when the brook dries up. It's a challenging time for you and for me. Because in the first place, it is God who spoke to Elijah to go to the brook of Kerith. You know, by the word of God, probably you will expect that the brook will never dry up because the word had come from the Lord. Turn eastward and go to the brook of Kerith. That was God. He heard from God 100%. But at a certain time, the brook became dry. It was his lifeline. Eventually there is no water. Yet he had heard from God to go to this place of Kerith. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Amen. Those are the moments that you really need to trust upon God and not lean on your own understanding because you may not even comprehend why in the first place God told you to go to the brook of Kerith 
and eventually the brook dries up. You may not have answers, but when you trust upon God, you know that God has a good plan for you. Praise the name of the Lord. When we are doing Psalms 23, we read in verse 3 that he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And I told you that even going through the valley of the shadow of death was still a path of righteousness. We tend to think that the path of righteousness is just full of goodies. It is easy time. Things come to us on a silver platter. But that is not the case. The paths of righteousness can lead you, can lead me to valleys of the shadows of death. And the same paths of righteousness can lead us to the brook of Kerith, where the brook dries up. Because God wants us to learn something. He wants us to learn to trust upon him, to wait upon him, and to depend on him. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The biggest challenge is what do we do when the brook dries up? Many times we go into panic mode because the brook has dried up. When we have lost what was a brook to us, your brook could be an employment. It could be a source of income. It could be a business. It could be a friend. It could be your lifeline. But the challenge is how do we react? How do we behave when the brook runs dry? Praise the name of the Lord. Are we going to be patient? To wait upon God to know what next? Seldom we are not patient to wait for further instructions. We take quick actions and sometimes those actions lead us astray. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Those who are led by God, they walk by faith, not by sight. When you heard from God, go to the brook of Kerith. Those were instructions from God. When the brook runs dry, I want to encourage you not to panic, but wait upon God for additional instructions on what you need to do. The biggest test for you and for me is the time between the time the brook dries up and when the next miracle arrives. That period of time, which for Elijah, I don't know how long it took, but we learn from the Bible that this man never went into a panic mode. He waited upon God because he knew he that sent me to the brook of Kerith has another miracle for me. And I have a message of hope to you today that every time the brook dries up, there is always another miracle that is in motion. Be still. Be of good courage. There is always another miracle that is in motion. And we need to be patient enough. We need to wait upon God that we may hear what he, he will instruct us. There are those moments that we experience what I'm calling the Kerith experience. When we come to places of scarcity, we have been enjoying plenty, but eventually there's scarcity. Moments, 
At one point, it was an exciting experience, but all of a sudden, things have changed. Those moments are important in your life, in my life. Even for us who are preachers, who are in the ministry, we also experience moments when the brook dries up and you start asking yourself, did I hear from God? Did I hear clearly? Because the ministry is not working out as you'd expect. Things are not working out as you'd expect. Those moments come. But I want to encourage you to wait upon the Lord. To trust upon the Lord even when the brook dries up. Amen. Hallelujah. The good news that I have for you today is that Kerith does not last forever. Amen. Kerith does not last forever. One day, the brook could dry up. What was a security for you may vanish, may be taken away. But always remember that those moments do not last forever. God will always come forth for you. He will come forth for me in a powerful way. Amen. Elijah did not sit there and cried because the brook has dried up. You know, sometimes we cry in self-pity because we do not know what to do next. But he remains faithful and waits upon God for God to release his next word. So don't panic. Don't be, uh, don't be angry at God because sometimes we get angry at God because of what we are going through. Wait upon God. It is a test for you. It is a test for me. Can we be able to wait upon God when the brook dries up? Listen to me. Dried up brooks don't cancel out God's plan. Often they cause it to emerge. Dry up brooks don't cancel out God's plan. Often they cause it to emerge. God's plan upon your life, upon my life, is never cancelled when the brook dries up. Instead, it is a time, it is a moment when it is even manifested, it emerges in a powerful way if we can only be able to wait upon the Lord. You may remember the history of a man who was a great preacher in the 17th century in England. His name was John Banyan. You may have heard about him. And many of us, we, even if we don't know the name, we know about the film or the story about the Pilgrim's Progress. It's a very common story. I watched the film many times. It was famous. It was touching. And I may want to let you know that John Banyam, a great preacher who preached during the 17th century in England, at one point the authorities arrested him and cast him in prison. It's like he had lost opportunities of preaching. It's like his brook had dried up. It's like freedom had dried up. But this man, he fully trusted. He firmly trusted upon God. That even when he was in prison, he was not mourning 
what had been done to him. But while he was there, he believed God and he continued praising God and serving God even while in prison. And it is at that time when he was in prison, he began to write about the pilgrim's progress, which many people in the world enjoyed reading, viewing such a great inspiration. But many times we don't know that this was done by a man who was behind bars. He was in a prison. He was incarcerated in prison because of preaching the gospel. The brook seemed like it was dry. But actually God's plan emerged in a powerful way because pilgrim's progress was able to reach millions and millions of people all over the world. Even today, pilgrim's progress is touching lives. Praise the name of the Lord. But he could have concluded that his opportunities have been, you know, have been cut off. But the carry the experience in prison brought forth something great. And I am telling you today that those moments, God causes something to be birthed in us. If we can remain faithful, he is able to provide to us even in the midst of a famine. And we see Elijah waiting upon God. And God comes to him, the Bible says in verse six, 5 and 6, that the word of the Lord came to him. Look at what the Bible says. Uh, is it for, no, it's after verse 6. That is... Um, but let's, to shorten, let's go to verse 10. Whereby he's told now, so arise, so he arose and went to Zarephath, and we, he came to the gate of the city. Indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. God had already spoken to him to leave the brook of Kerith. God released the word for him to move to another location, and that was Zarephath. This man waited upon God. He stayed at Kerith until he received the word of God. And what Kerry teaches me here, it's about obedience. Because this man never argued with God, but he remained faithful. He remained obedient until he heard the next word. Arise and go to Zarephath. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what Jesus said in John 15 and verse 14? You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Elijah was commanded, go to Kerith. He was there. The brook became dry. He waited for the next command. And was told, arise and go to Zarephath. If we want to be friends of Jesus, we must do whatever he commands us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Eventually we see Elijah going to this uh, widow. And God uses him to save a family that was almost dying. The widow of Zarephath told Elijah, we are just gathering sticks because we have some little flour and little oil that we are going to make a cake. I and my son will eat and after that we shall die. But because Elijah obeyed the word of God. He is able to perform a miracle in this city of Zarephath. And the life of a widow and a son is saved. What about if he did not hear God to leave Kerith? There is a family in Zarephath that could have died. That's why there is need for you and for me to hear what God is speaking to us. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to wind up. 
and tell you we serve a mighty God who is able to keep you he's able to keep me and preserve me even in the time of famine he's able to provide he provided for Elijah at the brook he also provided for Elijah the widow of Zarephath and the son during the time of famine and we see Elijah staying there until God commanded him otherwise amen hallelujah so as I've said Kerith is being cut away but I've told you you need a Kerith experience before the victory in Mount Carmel you need that time in Kerith if God just took you to Mount Carmel where you experience the miracles probably you could walk away in pride probably those miracles could destroy you they could destroy me but carry brings humility brings us to a point of obedience and listening to God it sharpens our spiritual capacity to be able to listen to God to listen to instructions and when God brings us to a place of victory we shall not be taken away by the victory but we shall always remember to give all the glory to God Amen Hallelujah Amen. Praise the name of the Lord May the Lord bless you May the Lord keep you If you are going through a dry brook I want to tell you there is another miracle in motion wait upon the Lord if you are going through a Kerith experience I want to tell you there is a victory on Mount Carmel but before that victory comes it is good for you it's a good experience for you to be in Kerith that the Lord may mold you that the Lord may shape you that the Lord may build your capacity to become a kind of a vessel that he wants you to be that you may become a servant that God wants you to be that you may bring glory to your holy to his holy name praise the name of the Lord I want to believe that you have heard the word of God and that God has spoken to you and may that word help you may that word bring hope in your life may that word encourage you to keep going on even when the brook dries up keep waiting upon God that is another miracle that is in motion you may not see it with your physical eyes but God is working something behind the scene and as I've told you we walk by faith not by sight the problem is that we want to see everything at a glance but that is not how the kingdom of God things work out we walk by faith you must believe God that yes the brook has dried up but I believe there is another miracle in motion amen the Lord bless you the Lord do you good amen as you wait for your next miracle as you wait for the victory on Mount Carmel. Today, may you know that God is providing to us even when we are in Kerith. He's going to give us water. He's going to give us bread. He's going to give us meat to sustain us in the time we are in Kerith. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Thank you for speaking to us your word today. That there is provision even in the midst of famine that even when the brook dries up you have a great plan and that your plan will emerge your plan will manifest in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray for those brothers those sisters that could be going through a carried experience where there is scarcity where the brook has run dry 
that they may remain steadfast, that they may wait upon you because you have good plans for them. And that, Lord, you release a word for them. You release a miracle for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for encouraging the body of Christ today and giving us hope to remain hopeful even during the time of famine and to know that you never leave us, you never forsake us, you will continue to provide to us. We bless you and we honor you. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. We will do a song as we offering. In Jesus' name. Shout out, you're welcome. In Jesus' name. much we want to invite invite pastor Catherine to close with a word of prayer amen amen, amen. 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 thank you so much uh, Reverend Charles for speaking the word of God to us 
And I believe we are blessed. I believe our lives are changed. I believe we are ministered unto because the word of God uh, comes and achieves its objective. So mm. I'm sure that the word of God has achieved something in your life, whether you are in Kerith or whether you are going to Mount Kamo, all those uh, processes of God. And the God of Kerith is the same God of Mount Kamo. Amen. So to believe God that Amen. whatever experience that you are going through in this life, the same God that has called you is willing to sustain you through every stage of this life as long as you are hidden in him. Amen. Amen. So we want to thank God as we pray together and the Lord bless you. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are grateful to you this day. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for gathering us together wherever we are in our homes and causing us to hear your voice. Thank you for your word that has come and spoken to us this day uh, through your servant. We receive it, O oh God, and we pray that it will continue to minister to us and accomplish the great purpose that you have sent it for, for every one of our lives. We want to thank you for your people. Thank you for their giving. Thank you for uh, oh, their, their places of work. Thank you for everything that they are doing to sustain themselves, O oh God, in this life. I pray that as they do it, they will know that you are the God that sustains us. You are the God that keeps us, that you are the God that watches over us, O oh Jehovah. And therefore, I speak a blessing upon every one of them in their going out and their coming in, in their businesses, in their places of work in everything that they're involved in. Lord, may you continue to bless them and make ways for them, cause them to prosper because you are faithful. We bless them, O oh God, and we declare your favor upon their lives. And uh, as we wind up, we want to pray that your peace will continue to lead us and to guide us and to minister to us. Be glorified, be exalted. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray and believe. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to invite you to join us next week Sunday from 11 a.m. through our Facebook uh, channel or platform and also our YouTube. If you look for Soul Winning Revival Church Banana Hill, you'll find us there and the Lord will continue to bless you. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, the Lord bless you. Also join us midweek service on Thursdays from 5 p.m. in uh, our Facebook and also in our YouTube channel. The Lord bless you. We want to say words of grace as we come to the end. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Shalom. Amen. Amen.